Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting homemade exponential equation. So we have x plus e to the power 1 minus e to the power x equals 1, and we're going to be solving for x values. So we're going to be looking for a solution. I'm also going to be showing you a graph at the end of this. But uh, more importantly, I'm going to show you a technique that can be used for these kinds of equations, which involve substitution. So these equations are specially designed this way so that there's going to be a nice solution. Okay, so here's my approach. I'm going to use a very nice technique called substitution. Okay, you knew that, right? So I'm going to call this something. How about y? And if you don't like y, you can use t or some other variable. We've been using t recently, so let's use a different variable. So what does that imply? This implies 1 minus e to the power x equals y. And of course, by substituting that into the equation by replacing 1 minus e to the x with y, we get another equation, which is x plus e to the power y equals 1. Now, these two equations make up a system, obviously. If you try to solve the system by using substitution, then you're going to be back to square one. It's not going to help. But if you use the other method, what some other method we have for solving systems, if you think about solving linear systems, we have two main systems, right? We have two main solution methods. One is substitution. The other one is elimination. So we're going to use elimination here, but let's go ahead and put these equations in a nicer form first. Now, there's a couple ways to go about it. I could probably just uh, isolate the x from the second equation. By the way, this is the first equation, and this is my second equation. So if I kind of manipulate the second equation and isolate the x, x becomes 1 minus e to the y. And from the first equation, I can write this as y equals 1 minus e to the power x. You could also do the following. Isolate one from each equation. The second one is already done. And then set the ones equal to each other because one equals one. Make sense? You could also proceed that way. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to give you the same thing. Okay, now, here's what we're going to do to eliminate one. Subtract these equations. X minus Y equals one minus E to the Y minus the quantity one minus E to the X. And then expand it, negate the expression inside the parentheses, minus 1 plus e to the x. 1 cancels out, leaving us with x minus y equals e to the power x minus e to the power y. Awesome. Now, we got a nice equation, or did we? <laughs> OK, depends. Uh, but if you look at this equation carefully, uh, you're going to notice that if x and y are equal, then this is going to be true, right? Why is that so? Because if x equals y, then x minus y will be 0. And e to the power x will equal e to the power y because x equals y. And this implies e to the x minus e to the y equals 0. So these two are going to be equal. Great. So that satisfies the equation. But why does it satisfy the equation? Well, it just works, right? So but let's go ahead and do the following. Let's go ahead and put the x's and y's on the same side. So we're going to be looking at it from a functional perspective. So I'd like to, let's see. I would want to bring the x on the right-hand side so we can write it like a to the x minus x equals e to the y minus y. Now, and again, if you graph this in Desmos, I haven't. Uh, I mean, actually, I have, but it's not included here. Uh, you're going to see a really nice relationship. And we, we're kinda, we'll kind of discuss that a little later. I'm going to show you another graph. Okay. So we said that x equals y satisfies this equation. But let's go ahead and take a look at this function, f of t uh, equals e to the t minus t. So if I define my function using a different variable, then I can look at these two as two points on the function, uh, x comma e to the x minus x and y comma e to the y minus y. So I'm evaluating this function at two different points, f of x and f of y, and I'm getting the following, f of y is the same as f of x. Now, and we're saying that this implies y equals x, but is that the only solution? So let's go ahead and look at the derivative of this function. Uh, you're going to find something interesting about it. If you differentiate this, you're going to get e to the power t minus 1. Set it equal to 0, you get e to the t equals 1. 
which means t equals 0. Because if you ln both sides, ln 1 is going to be 0. So that's a critical point. Let's make a table. I know some folks like second derivative. I just like making a table because I think table is more intuitive. I don't know. I just like the way it looks and it's more visual. So at 0, we got this. And so let's, let's go ahead and take a look at the derivative one more time. Okay. If t is greater than 0, e to the power t is going to be greater than 1. If t is greater than 0, e to the power t is going to be greater than 1. So e to the power t minus 1 is going to be positive. So our derivative is positive if t is greater than 0. Otherwise, it's negative which means our function is going to be decreasing on this interval and increasing on that interval, which means it has a minimum at 0, comma, what? 0, comma, 0. Why? Because our function is evaluated at 0, gives us e to the power 0 minus 0, and that is, okay, let's see. That is e, 1 minus 0. I'm sorry, e to the power t minus t. No, the derivative... Uh, so let me fix this real quick. Okay, so the derivative at 0 is 0, but I, if I evaluate the function f of t, which is e to the t minus t at 0, you get e to the power 0 minus 0, which is 1 minus 0, and that will be 1. So 0, 1 is going to be a minimum, and then our function is going to go in two different directions. Now, how is that going to behave as t approaches infinity. If you look at the limits of this function as t approaches plus minus infinity, you're going to see the end behavior. For example, if you look at the positive infinity, obviously it's going to go to positive infinity. If t approaches negative infinity, then e to the power t is going to approach 0, and negative t is going to approach positive infinity. And the sum of these two things is going to approach positive infinity. So on both ends, it's approaching positive infinity. So we are probably going to get something that looks like this. We have 0, 1 as our minimum point. Our one piece goes like this. The other piece goes like that. You have something like that. Make sense? OK. So that's our function. But more interestingly, let's go ahead and take a look at another function for this one. So we had originally, remember, x, x plus 1 minus e to the x equals 1. And from here, we got the solution. But here's one thing we assumed. We said that, hey, it's called this y. And then we got y equals x, which meant 1 minus e to the x equals x. So we're going to look at the graph of this later on. But let's go ahead and take a look at this function real quick. 1 minus e to the x equals x. Uh, we could also look at it this way. e to the x equals 1 minus x. Now, notice that. One of these functions is increasing, the other one is decreasing, so they're going to intersect at a single point. At 0, they're both going to go through 1, so we're going to have a situation like this, and x equals 0 is going to be the only solution for this equation. Let's go ahead and look at a graph of something else, which is also going to give us an idea. I wanted to include this graph in the video because I really love the graph. It's very interesting. It's kind of like a um, sort of symmetrical, not necessarily around the uh, y and the x-axis, but um, more like a y, y equals 1. Uh, and you can see here we have uh, both uh, decreasing functions, but our linear function intersecting the curve at a single point. Are there any other solutions? That's a good question to ask. And especially if you graph the relation we talked about with x and y, e to the x minus x equals e to the y minus y on Desmos, you're going to see a very interesting graph. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.